a flow here. Oh, I was like trying to sleep, but I couldn't sleep. It's not really a sensible time to sleep, but my eyes were tired. So I laid down for a bit, but I couldn't sleep. So I got up and I'm like, now what do I do? Oh, I know. I could read the Bible. Hey, there's an idea. So that's what we're going to do. At least that's what I'm going to do. I don't know about anybody else, but that's, that's kind of what I do. All right. So this time we're going to read Joshua 12 to 15 and Matthew 28. So we're finishing up Matthew. It's kind of sad because I kind of want to just keep reading the Gospels about Jesus times, Jesus times, but there's some good stuff in the rest of the Bible too, but you know, it's kind of fun to read about Jesus. But thankfully, the whole Bible's about Jesus, so we won't be missing too much. But it is kind of fun in the Gospels. It sort of feels like you're right alongside in the story with him. At least sometimes it feels that way. But at any rate, I'm going to start with a prayer and then do the reading. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you do for us. Help us to be aware of your presence in our lives and your uh, supply. Help us not to worry about tomorrow or any of the quote-unquote fearful things going on. I would encourage people not to even watch the news, but that's just me. I don't do it. I'm just going to watch for you. Signs of you, Lord, if you're uh, coming back soon, that would be awesome. But if not, give us strength to make it through our lives, um, doing the things that honor you, sharing your word, and talking about you and encouraging each other. Lord, I pray that you would build up your body. Uh, don't let the enemy have any place in your church, Lord. Any place in our hearts. Certainly not anything to worry about or fear. But help us not to get distracted. Uh, I pray that you would bring many people to your kingdom in this time, in spite of the weirdness going on in the world and um, if you can use us as your people to be part of that uh, great um, I'm sure you're doing that already I know you are but in my case it's kind of a, a long big request kind of a crazy thing because if it happens it's very miraculous other people it comes natural with me you got to we're out way more spirit power than normal to overcome my lack of ability. But anyway, thanks for all these things. Pray that I would read the word clearly and understand it. And thank you for all everything in Jesus' name, man. Okay, let's do it. If I can read, these glasses are junk, but we'll try. I've heard a lot about this Og guy. He appearing about Og, king of Bashan. All right, this is uh, Joshua chapter 12. Wait a minute. Why is it on verse 4? Okay, let, uh, there we go. Fixed. Okay. Joshua chapter 12. Now these are the kings of the land whom the Israelites struck down and whose lands they took beyond the Jordan to the east, from the Arnon Valley to Mount Hermon, including all the Araba eastward, Sihon, king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon. He ruled from Aroer on the rim of the Arnon Valley, along the middle of the valley, up to the Jabbok River, 
the border of the Ammonites, that is, half of Gilead, as well as the Arabah east of the Sea of Chenereth to the Sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea, eastward through Beth Jeshemoth, and southward below the slopes of Pisgah. And Og, king of Bashan, one of the remnant of the Rephaim, who lived in Ashtaroth and Edrei, he ruled over Mount Hermon, Salica, all of Bashan, up to the border of the Geshurites and Machathites, and half of Gilead to the border of Sihon, king of Heshbon. Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the Israelites had struck them down and given their land as an inheritance to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. And these are the kings of the land that Joshua and the Israelites conquered beyond the Jordan to the west, from Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon to Mount Halak, which rises towards Seir. According to the allotments to the tribes of Israel, Joshua gave them as an inheritance the hill country, the foothills, the Arabah, the slopes, the wilderness, and the Negev, the land of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. The king of Jericho won, the king of Ai, which is near Bethel, Bethel won, the king of Jerusalem won, the king of Hebron won, the king of Jarmuth won, the king of Lachish won, the king of Eglon won, the king of Gezer won, the king of Debir won, the king of Geder won, the king of Horma won, the king of Arad won, the king of Libna won, the king of Adullam won, the king of Makeda won, the king of Bethel won, the king of Tapua won, the king of Hefer won, the king of Aphek won, the king of Lasharon won, the king of Madon won, the king of Hazor won, the king of Shimron Meron won, the king of Akshaf won, the king of Tanakh won, the king of Megiddo won, the king of Kadesh won, the king of Jachniam in Carmel won, the king of Dor in Nephath Dor won, the king of Goim in Gilgal won, and the king of Terza won. So there were 31 kings in all. That's a lot of kings. It's kind of weird. Um, back in a time where every city had a king, basically. It's like, uh, kind of reminds me of that dude in the Hobbit movies that um, kind of chubby, red-haired guy in Lake Town, who was the king of Lake Town or whatever. I guess he's a king, but he kind of doesn't seem all that significant. Um, sort of like a caretaker in a way, but, you know, obviously like all people in power abuses his power. Dishonest and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, it's interesting to think of each little town or city having their own king. Um, these days, if there's any kings left, it's usually a king of an entire country or something like that. Um, but yeah, interesting stuff. All right, so let's go on to chapter 13. Now Joshua was old and well along in years, and the Lord said to him, you are old and well along in years, but very much of the land remains to be possessed. This is the land that remains, all the territory of the Philistines and the Geshurites, from the Sy uh, Shihor east of Egypt to the territory of Ekron on the north, considered to be Canaanite territory, that of the five Philistine rulers of Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron, as well as that of the Avites. To the south, all the land of the Canaanites, from Miara of the Sidonians, to Aphek, as far as the border of the Amorites, the land of the Gebelites, 
and all Lebanon to the east, from Baal Gad below Mount Hermon to Lebo Hamath, all the inhabitants of the hill country from Lebanon to Misrephath Maim, all the Sidonians, I myself will drive out before the Israelites. Be sure to divide it by lot as an inheritance to Israel, as I have commanded you. Now therefore divide this land as an inheritance to the nine tribes and the half-tribe of Manasseh. The other half of Manasseh, along with the Reubenites and Gadites, had received the inheritance Moses had given them beyond the Jordan to the east, just as Moses the servant of the Lord had assigned to them the area from a rower on the rim of the Arnon Valley, along with the city in the middle of the valley, the whole plateau of uh, Medeba as far as Dibon, and all the cities of Sihon king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon as far as the border of the Ammonites. Also, Gilead and the territory of the Geshurites and Machathites, all of Mount Herbin, Hermon, and all Bashan as far as Salika. The whole kingdom of Og and Bashan, who had reigned in Ashtaroth and Edrei, and had remained as a remnant of the Rephaim. Moses had struck them down and dispossessed them. But the Israelites did not drive out the Geshurites or the Machathites, so Geshur and Machath dwell among the Israelites to this day. To the tribe of Levi, however, Moses had given no inheritance. The offerings made by fire to the Lord, the God of Israel, are their inheritance, just as he had promised them. This is what Moses had given to the clans of the tribe of Reuben. The territory from Aroer on the rim of the Arnon Valley, along with the city in the middle of the valley, to the whole plateau beyond Medeba, to Heshbon and all its cities on the plateau, including Dibon, Bemoth, Baal, Beth Baal, Mion, Jahaz, Kedemoth, Mephath, Kiriathaim, Sibma, Zareth, Shahar, on the hill in the valley. Beth Peor, the slopes of Pisgah, and Beth Jeshemoth, all the cities of the plateau, and all the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon until Moses killed him and the chiefs of Midian, Evi, Rechem, Zur, Hur, and Reba, the princes of Sihon who lived in the land. The Israelites also killed the diviner Balaam, son of Beor, along with the others they put to the sword. And the border of the Reubenites was the bank of the Jordan. This was the inheritance of the clans of the Reubenites, including the cities and villages. This is what Moses had given to the clans of the tribe of Gad. The territory of Jazer, all the cities of Gilead, and the half, half the land of the Ammonites as far as a rower near Reba. The territory from Heshbon to Ramath Mizpah and Betonim, and from Mahanaim to the border of Debir, and in the valley Beth Haram, Beth Nimrah, Sakoth, and Zaphon, with the rest of the king of Sihon, king of Heshbon. Oh, sorry, with the rest of the kingdom of Sihon, king of Heshbon the territory on the east side of the Jordan up to the edge of the Sea of Chinnereth. This was the inheritance of the clans of the Gadites, including the cities and villages. This is what Moses had given to the clans of the half-tribe of Manasseh, that is, to half the tribe of the descendants of Manasseh, the territory from Mahanaim through all Bashan, all the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, including all the towns of Jair, that is, oh, that are in Bashan, 60 cities, wow. Half of Gilead and Ashtaroth and Edrei, the royal cities of Og in Bashan. All this was for the clans of the descendants of Machir, son of Manasseh, that is, half of the descendants of Machir. These were the portions Moses had given them on the plains of Moab beyond the Jordan east of Jericho. 
To the tribe of Levi, however, Moses had given no inheritance. The Lord, the God of Israel, is their inheritance, just as he had promised them. It's kind of the inheritance I want, by the way. Just saying. All right. Um, okay. The Lord, the God of Israel, is their inheritance. It's like, oh, you could either have all this, like, kind of barren land, like, looks like a desert, or you could have God. Hmm. I don't know. Which one should I choose? Oh, my goodness. I can't, I can't decide. Oh, wait a minute. It's obvious. Um, okay, let's go on to chapter 14. I kind of wonder, I, I don't know what historians would say, but like in these days, in this day and age, when you see pictures of Israel and in that general area of the world, it seems kind of like a bunch of tan colored rocks and sand and stuff. That's what I think of. I mean, they have like, obviously, uh, some uh whatever vegetation and stuff but it generally it seems kind of barren a bit from the images i've seen on the internet and videos and stuff but um like it's described as quite a uh, what's the word the kind of place you'd want to have for lack of better words back in the Bible, you know, a land flowing with milk and honey and all that stuff. So I kind of wonder if um, things were different back then than it is now, or just they had a different perception of what is valuable. But at any rate, sometimes I think about that. But either way, it doesn't even matter. Give, I mean, tempt me with some crazy garden with a bunch of multicolored fruit like uh, I don't know think of I mean think of like uh, Willy Wonka's chocolate factory with chocolate rivers and crazy multicolored plastic candy things try to tempt me with that no thanks I think I'll take God as my inheritance hey Alyssa thanks for the follow Okay, so let's go on to um, chapter 14. Joshua chapter 14. Now these are the portions that the Israelites inherited in the land of Canaan, as distributed by Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the heads of the families of the tribes of Israel. Their inheritance was assigned by lot for the nine and a half tribes, as the Lord had commanded through Moses. For Moses had given the inheritance east of the Jordan to the other two and a half tribes, but he granted no inheritance among them to the Levites. It really makes a point of that, doesn't it? It just keeps saying it. The Levites are like, I know, we get it. All right. The descendants of Joseph became two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim, and no portion of the land was given to the Levites except for cities in which to live, along with pasture lands for their flocks and herds. So the Israelites did as the Lord had commanded Moses, and they divided the land. Then the sons of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me? I was forty years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back to him an honest report. Although my brothers who went with me made the hearts of the people melt with fear, I remained loyal to the Lord my God. On that day Moses swore to me, saying, Surely the land on which you have set foot will be an inheritance to you and your children forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. Now behold, as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive these forty-five years since he spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. So here I am today, eighty-five years old, still as strong today as I was the day Moses sent me out. As my strength was then, so it is now for war, for going out and for coming in. Now therefore give me this hill country that the Lord promised me on that day, 
For you yourself heard then that the Anakim were there with great and fortified cities. Perhaps with the Lord's help I will drive them out as the Lord has spoken. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. Therefore Hebron belongs to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, as an inheritance to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord, the God of Israel. Hebron used to be called Kiriath Arba, after Arba, the greatest man among the Anakim. Then the land had rest from war. All right, that's cool. Caleb gets a special inheritance. I actually have a, a monkey named Caleb. Probably named after this guy, but I'm not totally sure. All right, so um, let's go on to chapter 15 of Joshua. Now the allotment for the clans of the tribe of Judah extended to the border of Edom, to the wilderness of Zin, at the extreme southern boundary. Their southern border started at the bay of on the southern tip of the Salt Sea, proceeded south of the ascent of um, Akrabim, continued on to Zin, went over to the south of Kadesh Barnea, ran past Hezron up to Adar, and curved toward Karka. It proceeded to uh, Asmon, joined the brook of Egypt, and ended at the sea. This was their southern border. The eastern border was the Salt Sea as far as the mouth of the, the Jordan. The northern border started from the Bay of the Sea at the mouth of the Jordan, went up to Beth Hogla, proceeded north of Beth Araba, and went up to the stone of Bohan, son of Reuben. <clears throat> then the border went up to Debir from the valley of Acor turning north to Gilgal, which faces the ascent of Adumim, south of the ravine. It continued along the waters of En Shemesh and came out at En Rogel. From there, the border went up the valley of Hinnom along the southern slope of the Jebusites, that is, Jerusalem, and ascended to the top of the hill that faces the valley of Hinnom on the west at the northern end of the valley of Rephaim. From the hilltop, the border curved to the spring of the waters of Nephtoa, proceeded to the cities of Mount Ephron, and then bent around toward Bela, that is, Kiriath Jerim, or Grm, depending on the accent you choose. Of course, I was just making that up. I don't know how to pronounce any of these words. The border curled westward from Bela to Mount Seir, ran along the northern slope of Mount Jerim, that is, Chesalon, went down to Beth Shemesh and crossed to Timnah. Then it went out to the northern slope of Ekron, curved toward Shikaron, proceeded to Mount Bela, went on to Jabneel, and ended at the sea. And the western border was the coastline of the Great Sea. These are the boundaries around the clans of the descendants of Judah. That's a long description for Judah. They got a really cool, complicated shape with lots of different edges and stuff. According to the Lord's command to him, Joshua gave Caleb, son of Jephunneh, a portion among the sons of Judah. Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron. Arba was the forefather of Anak. And Caleb drove out from there the three sons of Anak, the descendants of Sheshai, Ahiman, and Talmai, the children of Anak. From there he marched against the inhabitants of Debir, formerly known as Kiriath Sefer. And Caleb said, To the man who strikes down Kiriath Sefer and captures it, I will give my daughter Aksa in marriage. So Othniel, son of Caleb's brother Kenaz, captured the city, and Caleb gave his daughter Aksa to him in marriage. One day Aksa came to Othniel and urged him to ask her father for a field. When she got off her donkey, Caleb asked her, What do you desire? Give me a blessing, she answered. Since you have given me land in the Negev, give me springs of water as well. So Caleb gave her both the upper and lower springs. 
This is the inheritance of the clans of the tribe of Judah. These were the southernmost cities of the tribe of Judah in the Negev toward the border of Edom, Kabzeel, Eder, Jagur, Kina, Dimona, Adada, Kadesh, Hazor, Ethnon, Ziph, Tilam, Bealoth, Hazor, Hadadta, Kiriath, Hezron, that is Hazor, Amam, Shema, Maloda, Hazar, Gada, Heshmam, Beth, Pelet, Hazar, Shual, Beersheba, Biziotha, oh, I missed a syllable, Biziothia, Bela, Lim, Look at that. Lim is not capitalized. That is weird. I'm curious about that. Ezem, Eltolad. Eltolad is a very cool name. Chazil, Horma, Ziklag, Medmana, San Sana, Lebo, Labayoth, Seal, Shealhim, Ain, and Rimon. 29 cities in all, along with their villages. These were the these were in the foothills, Eshta, Eshtaol, Zora, Ashna, Zanoa, and Ganim, Tapua, Enam, Jarmuth, Adulam, Soka. Reminds me of a character in The Last Airbender. Azaka. Sharaim, Adiathaim, and Gadera, or Gedor, ah, nope, Gadirathaim, 14 cities along with their villages. Oh man, I butchered those, and more to come. Zenon, Hadasha, Migdal Gad, Dilan, Mizpeh, Jokthil, Lakish, Bozkath, Eglon, Kabon, Lamas, Chitlish, it's kind of cool sounding, Gedaroth, Beth Dagon, Nema, and Mekeda, 16 cities along with their villages, Libna, Ether, Ishan, Ifta, Ashna, Nezib, Kela, As, nope, Ach, nope, Akzib, and Marisha, nine cities along with their villages, Ekron with its towns and villages. From Ekron to the sea, all the cities near Ashdod along with their villages, Ashdod with its towns and villages, Gaza with its towns and villages as far as the brook of Egypt and the coastline of the Great Sea. These were in the hill country, Shamir, Jatir, Soka, Dana, Kiriath, Sana, that is Debir, Anab, Eshtimoa, or nope, Eshtimo, <laughs> Anim. <laughs> I saw that comment. Goshen, he Elon, and uh, Gilo, 11 cities along with their villages. <laughs> Making me laugh, bro. <laughs> Oh man, these these names. There's a lot more to go to. <laughs> Got like uh, ten more verses of this. Woo! I can make it. I can do it. Arab, Duma, Ishan, Janim, Beth Tapua, Afika, Afeka. I don't know. Humta, Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, and Zior, nine cities along with their villages. Maon, Carmel, Sif, Juta, Jezreel, Jokdiam, Zenoa, Cain, Zebia, uh, nope, Gibeah, and Timna, ten cities along with their villages. Halhul, Bethzur, Gedor, Mer Marath, Beth Anoth, and Elkaton. That's not bad either, Elkaton. Six cities along with their villages. Kiriath Baal, that is Kiriath Jerem and Reba, two cities along with their villages. These were in the wilderness. Beth Araba, Medin, 
Sekaka, Nibshan, the city of salt, and Engedi, six cities along with their villages. But the descendants of Judah could not drive out the Jebusites living in Jerusalem. So to this day, the Jebusites live there among the descendants of Judah. Now that's just weird. I don't remember that, but um, why do you think that is? Why would they not be able to? That's weird. It doesn't give any information about that, but um, they couldn't do any of this stuff anyway without God's help, so it's weird that they would not be able to drive out the Jebusites living in Jerusalem. There must be a reason for that. Obviously, all things are part of God's plan, and uh, he knew that. He knew that that was going to happen. So whatever the reason, God allowed it, so we can't complain. But the most important thing of that, uh, besides what I just said, was, which was actually important, was the fact that there was some Elto lad among these names. That's pretty cool. That's like a superhero name right there. Elto lad. But anyway. That's a lot of stuff for Judah. I, I wonder if all the other um, uh, tribes will get that long of a description. I feel like let's just give a huge long description for Judah because that's where Jesus came from. That's how I'm going to interpret it. Jesus is the most important. And guess what? He came from the tribe of Judah. So he gets a way longer description of his tribe. I'm not going to pretend that that's actually um, good theology, but that's how I'm interpreting it. Because I'm not very smart. <clears throat> no famous. Hey, thanks for the, the follow. All right, so that's it for Joshua today. Let's go on to um, Matthew chapter 28. Good chapter. Unfortunately, it's the last chapter in Matthew. So we'll be wrapping up Matthew today, which is sad. I wish there were more chapters. Reminded me of Maranatha. That's how the earliest apostles were greeting each other and waiting of the second coming of Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm pretty sure, right? I love that one. Yeah, I've heard of that. I didn't I didn't realize that it was a, a word they used to greet each other, but I associate it more with a, a worship project or ministry type thing, uh, music type stuff. Walk by faith. Nice to see you. Meet you. Hey. I will try to walk by faith, not by sight. And ironically, I've got the worst glasses on earth today, so it's a little bit easier to walk by faith than by sight with these things. All right, so let's uh, read Matthew chapter 28, and then we'll wrap it up for today. <clears throat> these were in the wilderness. Oh, wait a minute, what? Uh, sorry, let's go on to... Matthew, whoa, ah, stop clicking. Weird stuff happens when I don't comb my hair and I wear glasses. It's just, just one of those scuff streams. Sorry about that. It's the best I can do. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, rolled away the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. That's so cool. The guards trembled in fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they hurried away from the tomb in fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. Oh, man. They came to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. That's totally what I'm going to be doing someday. Do not be afraid, said Jesus. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests all that had happened. And after the chief... Oh, so there were some non-Christians who saw the risen Christ. I forgot about these guys. Okay. So one of my last streams I mentioned that I didn't think he appeared to anyone except for believers, but 
technically these guys. Maybe they became believers. Anyway, sorry, commentary. And after the chief priests had met with the elders and formed a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money and instructed them, You are to say, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report reaches the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the guards took the money and did as they were instructed. And this account has been circulated among the Jews to this very day. Meanwhile, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mount, mountain Jesus had designated. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Boom. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Oh man, I love that verse. I don't think he's just talking about Peter, James, and John. Surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Because guess what? They died way before the end of the age. So this promise is for us. If you follow Jesus, he's going to be with you. He's not going not gonna to leave you. not going to forsake you. Hey, El Muerto. How's it going? <clears throat> you look a little... You look like you need some meat on your bones, man. You need to uh, eat some meat. Meat and carrots and potatoes. Nice to see you. Our live reading. Yeah, yeah. God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. I'm surprised you recognize me. Like, how do you even know it's me? I've got glasses on and my hair is different. It doesn't make sense. I don't believe it. It doesn't... It. it no, you cannot see through my disguise. My superhero symbol isn't even showing not possible. Hey, Megary, Bob Beggary, Megary, Beggary, Bo Beggary, Banana Fana, Bo something, Fee Fi, Fo, whatever. Thanks for the, um, for the likes and stuff. And the tip, <clears throat> it's going, just got home, woke up 6 a.m. to help my dad run some errands. Very nice. Thinking about drumming for a little now that I have some time. Sweet. Do it. Well, all that excitement got me so stirred up that I think I'll end the stream. But do bump Drum roll. And then the stream ends. But yeah. Thank you everybody that dropped by though. I'll probably do um, another reading later because, uh, I don't know, what else am I supposed to do? I literally have no life, no existence, except for reading the Bible. I'm the guy that reads the Bible. But yeah, it's good to see you too. I hope your drumming goes well. I might even drop in to say hello. If you're on kick, go check out El Muerto. He's a very cool dude, likes to play the drums. He's also very creative. He doesn't show his creative side very often. But he is into all sorts of arts and crafts and... DIY, building stuff. It's very, very cool. It was good to meet you, Null Famous. Thank you for dropping by and sticking around for a bit. All of y'all, or Daff, as usual, you've become my most regular viewer, for sure. Other than the lurkers, but, you know, nobody knows. They have better disguises than mine, somehow. Ah. <sighs> God bless Brother Flo. May Jesus, our Holy Lord God, protect you and continue giving you joy and abundance. And may your joy overflow. I'm so glad to see you're in a great mood. And I pray, Lord Jesus, gives you even more joy and peace. Oh, man. I just don't even... I read the whole chapter, but I can't even finish this paragraph. It's just too much. Spirit forever and ever in Jesus' holy name. Great day. Yeah, I'm just a little bit in a goofy mood. I don't know why. I think it's all those names. That's why those names are in there. The whole reason for those names, no, I'm just, this is, don't, don't, don't quote me on this because it sounds very heretical, but it's, if it makes you smile because you're trying to pronounce them and you have a better day because of it, 
because he laughed a few times. Why not? But yes, um, perhaps next time when I'm reading this on stream, I'll do a um, AI voice recording and I'll just like... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, yes, thanks for joining me. I will see you all next time.